Good morning. Welcome to Milk and Honey Heritage Farms. I'm Heather. So we're just a few minutes early and we'll wait until some people are able to um, join us. There we are. Wait for everybody to come in. I hope you're having a great day so far. It's Thursday. Oh, welcome back. So we're just waiting for a few more minutes. I'm a few minutes early. I just thought I would uh, pop on and make sure that I was doing whatever I'm supposed to be doing, right? Clicking all the buttons and all the things, right? Uh, how's your day going today, Teresa? So I was, uh, I got my morning chores done and then I had a few uh, pieces. Hi, Troy. How are you? Good to see you. I hope you're having a good, good Thursday. Yeah, I was running around getting my morning chores done. And then there was a few um, items for today's project that I wasn't sure where they were and I couldn't find them. So I was like going back and forth everywhere and I worked up a sweat. <laughs> uh Hello, living my best life at 60. Welcome in. Thank you for being here today. I'm just waiting a few minutes for everyone to um, pop in. We're a few minutes early and we're just kind of checking in with each other and and uh, seeing how Thursday's going so far. Is everybody planting things outside? Hi, my Alabama far farm life. Welcome in. That's Kathleen. If you haven't, if you all have channels and you haven't checked each other out, please do so. Um, we all have like some great, amazing things to share, um, inspire, give great ideas on, on all kinds of stuff. So it's very nice. Actually, <clears throat> let's see. I'm going to add you as a moderator. Kathleen. I'm trying to just do a few every time I pop in to make sure that I have somebody. So I was kind of thinking that um, I need to do an animal update on my cows. So I was kind of thinking about doing a, um, a live showing the cows because they're pregnant right now. They'll have their babies um, end of May, June-ish kind of area. So I was kind of thinking about going around and reintroducing each of the mama cows um, so that everybody can see. And then we can look at how round they're getting and stuff like that. I thought maybe that might be kind of a fun thing to do. So I might do that. Nice. Welcome in, everybody. I'm glad that you're here. So I suppose we can go ahead and get started. So um, I'll show you. I'm, I'm going to have to move you guys back to show you what I did. So last year, I created this little miniature screen door off of a picture I saw somewhere. And I went to the Habitat for Humanity resale store and I found like a small window screen that has like the metal framing. And um, so I recre recreated it. How does that work? I recreated this window. Kind of hard to see. Is it hard to see? Anyways, um, the the plywood that I used was laying around and it's all like warped and twisted. And I don't even really know how I did it. But I bought some like um, hinges from the resale store that were like a few cents to add that look. And I had purchased like a small bag of these cute little knobs. So, and then I, um, let's see if I can get you guys to see. And I did this chicken on here. 
So there's that, it's super cute, right? And then I'll show you the back. I attached this metal um, window screen onto the back. So you can just hang it on the wall. I mean, you can make them any size that you want. And we're gonna play around with how I can get you guys to see, make sure you guys can see what I'm doing on this because I'm using my laptop. I'm gonna pull my pieces up of what we're doing today. So um, I had my husband recreate that project. How can I make it easier and look a little bit better? It looks pretty much the same, except we have straight wood and he drilled pilot holes. So what we did, I wonder how I can, I did a white bottom to make sure that you guys can see. So right here on the corners, I did a 45 degree angle. And for this, this is the same size. He did a great job replicating it. <laughs> so the piece is 13 inches um, for the width by 28 inches length. Okay, and then we just used, this is a, um, a one by three and a half, I think is what they call it. And we just bought an eight foot piece and cut it down. And then we used a, um, a one by two for the center piece. Okay, so they're 45 degree, 45 degree angle cuts. And then what we did is we pre-drilled which way do I go? We pre-drilled um, holes with a smaller bit that's smaller than the screws. To, and you want to make sure that it goes all the way through to your other piece so when you're connecting them, they, they stay together. And then we um, used a bigger drill bit and drilled in a little bit, just a little bit, because we're going to use a, um, a little piece of wood to fill in the gaps. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to show you how to attach and we're going to paint and we're going to do all the stuff on this. Hi, Fair Bricks. Welcome in. If you guys haven't checked that channel out, go check his channel out. He plays some really cool music. So we pre-cut with a round dowel little pieces that will fit into these to cover them up just to give it a more finished look. Um, I have some wood glue and we're going to try to attempt, I'm hoping that this wood glue will, it sounds like it'll be good. So anyways, we've got these little pieces that we measured out and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a little wood glue on the side that's going to be getting pushed inside if I can put, squeeze it out. Ooh, that, that was not me, but it was me, but it wasn't me. Okay, and so then, I'm trying to see if I can get this in. You know how things work when you go live. Okay. You should use a rubber mallet, but I forgot to bring my rubber mallet in. So it's okay. You want to use a rubber mallet so you don't put dents in your wood. Okay, honestly, it's not me making gassy sounds. <laughs> Come on. All right, so we're going to get this in. Have you guys uh, built anything or put anything together? You know how sometimes you buy something at a store and you have to put them all together and they have those instructions and in like 50 million direction instructions and you're like, oh my gosh, what is this? <laughs> Hi, P&J. Welcome in. Thank you for being here. 
So today we're working on a mini screen door. You can make them any size that you want. If you choose to make one of these, it's really not that difficult, honestly. It's pretty easy and it's adorable for a cute little like, um, if you like country decor. Um, you could also put some um, sealant protectant on it and hang it outside somewhere for an outdoor decoration if you wanted to. That's a fun idea. Um, I also thought it would be fun to put um, chicken wire on the back side of it and then put like a, um, maybe like a, um, a mesh fabric on the back, like a weed barrier fabric behind it. And then you could then plant succulents in, in it. <clears throat> so if you like um, did the chicken wire and then the like weed fabric barrier behind it, and then you can put some um, soil in there and then put like succulents and you'd want to lay it down for a couple of weeks flat like this while the while the roots all attach in the dirt and everything and then you can hang it up that would be really cute really cute okay so i got those filled and then i'm going to do the same thing to the other side once i get that done then we're going to do the fun stuff okay i just Actually, I should have probably did the other side first, but you know what? We're here together, and it's getting done. So I put this paper down on the table. I was hoping that maybe it was, it would be a little bit more easy for you to see because my table is pretty dark. So I don't know if it is or isn't. So are any of you doing any collaborations that you're involved in? Hi Bella, welcome in. Thank you for being here. We're making a, um, a miniature wooden piece. I like get that one in a little bit more. And then at the end, I can choose to sand these down. Um, with this, you might want to sand down all the like outside and inside edges if you wish. Um, we did sand the top of it down a little bit so it's a little smoother. Um, so when I paint it, I'm what I'm looking for is more of kind of like a, a rustic kind of look. So we'll get to that after we attach the screen. I would suggest staining it or painting it before you attach the screen to it. But um, we don't have enough time to let the paint dry um, while we're doing this live. So I'm going to attach the screen while we're here first. And then we'll paint it because I don't want you guys to have to wait, like, you know, it's, it'd take forever for the paint to dry. So I'm going to take the handle off the knob. It's just a cute little knob that I found at some thrift store. There was a whole bunch of them and they were like, I don't know, 20 cents or 30 cents a piece. So... I'm trying to get this off so that we can then attach the screen on the back side of it and then we can get to decorating. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Has a little um, washer and nut. So you want to put the washer on the back side so it helps it so it doesn't like slip through and it stays on. I'm going to set this aside and I'll put this in at a later date because the paint's going to, like I said, take a while to dry. So we're going to turn this upside down, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab screen 
And this screen, like I said, you could do chicken wire with like a, um, a garden type piece of, uh, what is it called? I lost it. You can do succulent, you can grow succulents in this, but I would highly recommend um, putting some seal outdoor sealant on it before you put it outside and before you plant in it, right? Okay, let me grab some scissors so I can cut. Hi, Jan. Welcome in. Thank you for being here. So I'm just putting this thicker ruler on here just to kind of hold it down so I can cut it. Now, if you do use chicken wire, make sure you wear gloves. Actually, this is kind of pokey too, but chicken wire will really scratch you up, so be careful. not going to be perfectly square which is fine as long as it's not sticking out the sides of it when you turn it over it'll work okay so now that I've got that cut out what we're gonna do is I got a new tool we're gonna attach this on trying to make it as flat as we can so I got, we got these little um, dowels. I think they were like 10 foot dowels and we cut them to fit on here to help hold this. You can also put some wood glue too to attach the screen, like put wood glue strip on the wood pieces and then, but we're gonna just nail it in. I think that um, that will be just fine. I don't think I need to add the glue too because it's not like a um, a furniture piece or something that you're going to be using, right? So I'm just trying to get these all lined up. And making sure that my screen is underneath my little wood pieces so that it stays on the board. So I'm going to go ahead and get this side packed down first and then I'll try to get it all lined up. I, I do have a line that I scratched into the wood. You can use a pin too. You just want to make sure that you get it centered. You could use a pencil, whatever you want. So here's my new tool. It's a little uh, <clears throat> stapler whoops that's okay don't worry it was just a bubble wrap so we got those in there and because we don't want to turn up how deep the um, nails staples how deep the staples shoot in because then it'll make a dent you should use a rubber mallet Ta-da! okay so this is the tricky part right here I'm trying to make sure that I get the screen as flat as I can on here without it you know, looking all bubbly and wacky. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's as perfect as you want it to be, I suppose. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this around.
and try to get it as flat as I can. Are there um, any collaborations that any of you guys are doing or going to join? Hold that down. Okay, I'm not going to put do this one yet because I want to make sure that I have enough to where I can stretch it out if I need to stretch it out. I know that's loud. Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Aw. All right. So it's coming along pretty good, I think. All right, there is, there is that. So I am not going to go around and hammer these down because I don't want you guys to sit there and listen to hammering going on, okay? I'll do that later. Anyway, so I have my pilot hole that I pre-drilled. Your drill that you're pre-drilling with needs to be a little bit smaller than, or the same size as this to put that in, but I'll put that in after we paint. Now we're going to paint. <clears throat> um, so for the top part, we are going to do a, I'm going to get some parchment paper, a design. I already have paper um, underneath here, but I'm going to do some parchment paper under here, and I'm going to let you guys choose. I'm going to make sure that I'm doing this on the right side for my handle, so because I'm doing this upside down so you guys can see. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get tape to this off. I'm going to use this for my paint. Okay, so what I'm going to let you guys choose, we're going to do a design on the screen. So would you guys like to have a pig design or a cow design? So I'm going to paint, dip this in paint, and I'm going to put it, not the, not the cookie cutter, but I'm going to put the design on here, and then I'm going to use puffy paint to make it stand out more. Let me know, pig or a cow? Cow? Okay, I'll do a cow. I'm trying to get this paint out. I don't think it is. So you're going to want to use a a color that pops like orange or teal or blue or maybe even red right just so that way it shows through so i'm going to first use white 
just to get my design on there. And then I'm going to outline it with um, some puffy paint. I'll get a paintbrush over here. Spread this out. And I'm going to dip my cookie cutter into the paint just to get my outline on it. Okay. And hopefully the first time I do it, it looks right. Okay. So you can do it anywhere you want. And you want to make sure that you press all the edges down and then lift straight up. And it didn't do it. So that what that tells me is I need to put thicker paint. Okay. Let's see if we can do this. It works on the paper. It's just because it's a screen. So you have to have the paint super thick. So we'll see if this works. If this doesn't work, I've done it before. But we'll see. I can kind of see it a little bit. Nope. Okay, so what we're going to do, I think, is use the puffy paint as the paint because it's thicker. I don't think this uh, latex is thick enough to put the design on there, which is fine. We live and we learn, right? Hi, backyard trucker. How are you? Thank you for being here. Hi, Tina at Life in the Piedmont. Did I miss anyone? Michael's Adventures, Bella, Anne. Hi, everybody. Thank you for being here. I mean, one way that you could do it is you could lay your design on there and then trace around the design, but I feel like that would be kind of complicated to do it on a live. <laughs> So I'm just dipping my cookie cutter in here, hoping that this time it'll show my pattern of this cow will show up on, on there. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, I can kind of see it. You guys probably can't see it. But what I'm going to go ahead and do while I can kind of see it is I'm going to outline it with just from, you know, some puffy paint. And I'm going to try to keep a steady hand. Wish me luck. <laughs> There. There's a little moo moo cow. <clears throat> All right, so there's that. So you can paint it any colors that you want to paint it, right? Um, hi, the butt budget preppers. Hi, Natasha. How are you? So I'm just going to put a whole bunch of paint. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, I'm getting my fingers all in it. It squirted out right there. We didn't need that. Let me grab a napkin. Who said you can't get all into your projects? Come on. 
So I see what happened is it had like a little dry bit in the glue. That's what popped out. It's not a big deal. So I'm not trying to get this perfect. I'm not trying to make it look all, you know, like you would um, maybe when you're painting your house or something. You know, you don't have to do that. I'm going to flip this upside down. There we go. And then, yeah, it's so I'm trying to make it look kind of like a little bit of a rustic look. So it's not going to be beautiful, you know, like perfect. And then to get my edges, because I have already got a screen, you can use like a piece of cardboard or a paper plate to set down on the sides so that you don't get paint on your screen. Do you guys hear that ding? I'm a paint mess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my fingers are already paint. Yeah, when I do bigger projects, yeah, me, I'm a paint mag magnet too. <laughs> and so when I do this, I'm going to try to kind of cover all my edges with the white because I primarily am going to do white. I mean, you can choose any color you want. I contemplated on doing red. You could add red into it. So it's just, I'm just doing it like really sloppy so that I can add other colors in it and it blends together kind of. So I'm using now a little bit of black here and there to get some streaks because I want to kind of make it look weathered. So then when this project is all done and dried, you can get a sandpaper out and you can sandpaper like um, the corners and like the edges, like where the door handle is and where the threshold is. Like imagine like grandma's house and grandma's screen door of all the kids over all the years slamming the dogs, you know, whatever animals running in and out of that screen door and it gets all like marked up and whatnot, you know? So you can use a gray, you could even use a pop of something, a different color, teal, yellow, whatever, you know, red. And then you just kind of keep adding paint to get the right. You know, it's kind of gray. It's weathered. I can lighten it up. I can darken it up, you know, just play around with it until, like, it looks how you want it to look got to experiment and, you know, get your edges, go with the grain of the wood, kind of. I mean, like, we're trying to make this look all, like, kind of weathered. I want a little bit more white in there because back then they would, like, whitewash things and stuff like that. Hi, 49 more. Welcome in. Hi, Christy. How are you? Are you guys doing any interesting projects on the farm, at the home? Oh, I thought I would mention I have a collaboration that's open, and I would love for everybody to join in. It's called Pizza Parte. So if you um, want to join in, it's making pizza at home with your own kind of twist to how you like making your pizza. And I'd love for you guys to join and add in your pizza if you make pizza. Or if you haven't, give it a try. Can you kind of see that? I mean, it's not beautiful. You just got to keep on going and playing around with it and getting it to how you want it. I mean, if it's in your house, you could match um, colors of what you have in your house, stuff like that. 
we've got some pizza dough one day. Never tried it, but saw the club. Ooh, awesome. Yeah, make sure you um, tag my channel in it so that way I can put you on the playlist because that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. I'm going to be doing a salad one pretty soon of salad dressings. I thought that with, you know, everybody getting their salads on for the summertime that making some dressings and I think if you watch enough videos of these collaborations what whatever kind of collaborations they are you can get inspired by new ideas and sometimes by watching them you can then you know twist them and and make your own from watching the videos it'll you know help inspire you and give you that like you know you know what I'm saying, I hope. And then also, if you're in a collaboration, I think, this is my opinion, don't get mad at me, but I think that if you can, if you see other people who are in the collaboration making videos, maybe try and share them out. You know, we got to help each other, share each other out, love on each other. What do you think? Kind of gray. I could have added a little less um, black paint, but then again, it doesn't matter. There's no like true way of having it, you know, that it has to be. They're all gonna be unique and different, right? <clears throat> you could add, add a pop of color in there if you wanted to, <clears throat> excuse me. Which I might actually just do just for the fun of it. And if you lightly brush it, see that? Of course, get all your edges and corners and stuff like that. I'm just doing the top of it to show you guys some ideas so that maybe hopefully it'll inspire you. So let's add a pop of um, chill. Should we do it? Hi, Martina. Welcome in. I hope you're having a great Thursday. So does anybody have some um, awesome weekend plans? I've been um, busy trying to get like all my um, my orchard and all my flower beds and garden beds, trying to catch up and get it all taken care of and ready to go. So what do you think? Can you see that? And like I said, after it's all dry, you can take a sander and kind of Rough it, rough it up, and so it makes it look a little bit more weathered, right? So just putting a little bit of teal here and there. You could do red. Red would be cool. But, yeah, this would be really neat if you put an outdoor sealant on this. And you actually use chicken wire and fabric underneath of it and put succulents. And then you could hang this. That would be really cute. Good idea. For weird container gardening on Gail's Southern Living. There's an idea for somebody. Right? Thank you. So it kind of gives like maybe a little beachy vibe with farm cow. Right. Now let's add another color. You ready? What color should I add? I'm thinking red. What do you think? Yep, red. I mean, you could even do like <clears throat> pink. You don't have to do multiple colors. You can just do one color if you want to. But why not make it fun, right? If you're going to be crafting and spending the time, have fun with it, right? 
I'm just going to do little dabs like this, right? Here and there, and then I'm going to kind of brush them out. No, it's not going to be polka dotted. <laughs> Okay, so let's see what happens here. What do you think? And then once this is all dry and everything, I'll post a finished picture on the um, on my community page so you guys can see what it looks like. What do you think? So the reason why I did the cow in teal is because, well, this is kind of more of a, this is the handle that I'll put on once it's dry. Isn't that pretty? Um, so it map so the cow matches that handle. So that's kind of cool. That's kind of cute, right? Of course, I didn't do the inside edges and the outside edges because that's a little bit more. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you guys. So what kind of pro so I do have like a little bit later this summer when some of the leaves on some of my plants get bigger, a um, bird bath out of cement that I'm gonna um, probably take you guys on a live doing. It won't be finished, but I'll show you a finished one that I did. It's a huge, it's pretty big. I'll show you the finished one, but then I'll take it along and I'll show you how I make it if you haven't made that. That might be fun to do. I was going to do a furniture piece, but I didn't want to um, bring that in the house and stand it in the house. <laughs> right? So what, do any of you guys do any crafting or building of anything? Reading your comments. Planting beans this weekend. Awesome. I'm filling our last raised bed and filling for the weird container. Oh, weird container growing. See? Yep. What do you guys think? Do you like the pop of red in there? Or is that too busy? Too much. And then once the um, once the cow dries, I'll probably go over it one more time with the puffy paint just to make sure that it um, it's all lined up. Myself, but I get the ideas and hubby and son make it for me. Yes, that does count because she came up with the idea. That's creativity. Yeah, so the first one window that I did is I bought a green a resale store that goes in your window, right? And then I bought some of these little hinges that were like studs just to make it look rustic, right? And I just kind of did it like that. So that's the one that I did, except the wood that I was using, because I was using um, whatever wood pieces we had inside, because we all know how expensive wood got. Um, 
my piece of wood was really warped, you know. And so it's a little janky, but it came together and it's still, you know, you know, you do what you can do, right? But yeah, I think like definitely if you come up with ideas on things that you want to make and you have somebody else do it, why not? Let me get a little bit more white. I know I just put red, but I'm just kind of blend that into this. And once it dries, I'm going to go back over it with a little bit of a sander um, on the outside edges here and there, inside edges, and especially like around the door handle and the foot, the footing of the screen door, like, you know. Because you kick it shut when you have your hands full, stuff like that, you know. And then you can, you don't, if you're keeping this inside, you don't have to seal it. This is just um, generic acrylic paint. Planting my first giant pumpkin today. Oh, that is cool. I hope you get a big one. We got one year I did that, and the pumpkin was so big we couldn't um, lift it. We actually It took three adults to roll it onto the tractor, and we put um, some netting around it and weighed it, and it was like 350 pounds. But we couldn't really move it, you know, because it was so heavy. And so what we ended up doing is, like, um, the kids jumped on it to break it up. And uh, we ended up feeding it. We had pigs at the time. And so we, they loved it. <laughs> the pigs and my cows like to eat um, pumpkin, too. So in the fall, I used to, when I had my pigs, um, I used to put on Halloween day and the day after I'd post local in my area that um, if anybody wants to get rid of um, unpainted, unmoldy um, pumpkins, meet me at a certain location. And so for years, people would be looking for me online so that they could bring me their pumpkins. And, um, you know, that's free food for animals as long as it was like you know not moldy what you say i came in to make a marker with a date and plant it oh smart smart i made a coffee table from two old ironing boards using glass washboards to separate them then use three cast iron irons as a piece. Oh, that sounds really cool. Very cool. Yeah, I did. I had an, um, a footboard and a headboard, you know, the old wooden ones with the spindles. And I, um, they were painted from, you know, long, long ago. And what I ended up doing is sanding them down lightly. I didn't sand them all the way down. And then I just, um, put a sealant on them and I made them into benches. So I sold those to some people for a while. I was doing um, furniture pieces and stuff like that, like dressers and stuff and, and re, you know, repainting them and selling those. That was just before the, the vid happened and then rules and things like that for selling things and hand, it just all got weird. So I'm like, okay. I'm done. So, I'm just kind of using this paper to paint into the side of it. It's kind of hard to do this, like at this angle.
I do. I have like this um, clothing, wooden clothing thing. It's it's more modern. Um, it's black and it's got cabinet doors and you'd hang your clothes in it. And um, one of the feet came off. So what I want to do is, or what I'm going to do, is I got to drill down into the bottom of the cabinet to um, get that foot back on. And I'm going to then um, somehow add shelving into the cabinet. So that way I can use it for storage. I've got, so from the resale store, um, a few years back, I bought uh, lower kitchen cabinets. And I painted them black. And I've got um, a top on them to where I can put tiles. I've got the tiles. Um, so I need to uh, put the tiles attached to the top of it for a workspace for crafting. And also I can use it in my garage. So I bought a, um, a regular stove at the resale. Yeah, I go to the resale. I don't go all the time. I used to. I hardly go anymore. But um, I bought a, a stove for $7 at the resale store and I use the stove for canning in my garage. And so I built the lower cat or put the lower cabinets in there for storage of like my jars and stuff like that and also to craft on it. So I got to get that finished eventually soon. Last year, um, I had to um, move, uh, moved my mom so I had to move all her belongings and stuff like that and and I ended up having to put a lot of her stuff in my garage for storage for a while so um slowly but surely I'm getting that organized don't get paint on your shirt good luck right I'll go back over this later I know there's spots that I miss. Don't you worry. I'm just trying to demonstrate. This is a demo. Not a professional here. You are at your own risk. But that little staple gun, that was cool. I was a little bit intimidated because I'd never used it before. But it works pretty good. So don't be afraid to use tools. Just read the instructions, safety first, right? So did you guys all see um, my video on the little handbag that I made um, with the bumblebee fabric? That turned out pretty cute. Where did it go? Put it somewhere else. So there you have it. Voila! And then what I'll do once it's all, I haven't finished all of it. I'll go back through and, and touch up the areas that I didn't miss and maybe play with colors and stuff like that a little bit more. Right? Isn't that super cute? And then I'll sand down some of the edges and then we'll have this little knob that I'll put in here and then I'll put some little hinges on the other side. Cute, huh? And like I said, you can put chicken mesh. I think, actually, I kind of feel like I need to make another one of these and seal it for outdoor use and do the chicken wire succulent planter thing. I'm going to do it because I did one of those wire wreaths where I did succulents in a heart wire wreath. Let me aim you guys up so you can see me. Hi. <laughs> so yeah, I did a um, heart um, wire wreath form where I put succulents in that. So that was um, that was really cool. Looks cute. So I might do that for my weird container garden. And if nobody else jumps on it, or somebody else jump on it, they're all gonna look different. So um, I did write down some. So I've got the pizza parte. Please make some pizza. I want to see your. I want to see that. I didn't obviously make my bread for mine. I was just trying. A lot of times when I do um, 
videos on cooking things and things like that. I'm trying to do it to where hopefully I'm inspiring people and it's not like a whole bunch, you know, when you look at a recipe and it's got that long list of things you've never heard of. I'm trying to make it more simple so that way, you know, younger people or people who, you know, haven't done that might be a little bit more inspired, you know. Um, if you guys haven't checked out Grow Big TV, um, that is um, Joe on Grow Big TV and Corky. They have this Grow Big Challenge where you first place winner wins $100. And then there's a second and third place prizes as well. Um, the challenge is Peter Pepper's you can choose one or more. Peter Pepper's Dr. White Cheese Tomatoes, Watermelon Radish, Mammoth Sunflowers, Detroit Red Beets, and Fort Hook or Black Beauty Zucchini. So you can do one or more of these challenges. You can win. If you win, you win $100. Like if you did all six and you won all six, you'd win $600. I mean, you know, why not try? Anyways, I think so the um, rules for that is you have to make a showing your seeds, starting your seeds, um, a middle video, and then an end of video where you measure um, whatever you're growing. I think you might even weigh it. I'm not sure. You'll have to look at his video on that. But that's a cool challenge to get everybody out and growing and being a little bit more self-sufficient and doing things. Um, let's see, Indiana Backyard Gardener has an IBG Earth Day 24, so it's, um, planting something on that day, so you make a video, and you tag her channel, and you put hashtag IBG Earth Day, sorry, yes, IBG Earth Day 24, <laughs> hashtag, um, for that one, so you're gonna grow something like a tree or a bush or something for that'll help with the environment, right? So that is that. And then um, Not For Nothing Homestead and um, Meg's Fearless Adventures. Um, those two channels have a collaboration called Home Is Where The Health Is. So if you look for Home Is Where The Health Is, um, the channels that are collaborators in that um, are making videos of things that they do at home that help make their family or them a little bit more healthier by doing whatever they're showing. Like, um, instead of buying it from the store, you know, just things to be healthier, right? So, that's that. Anybody got any questions for me? No? I'm silent. Also, I was wondering what you guys would be interested in seeing on a live. Come on, come on. Yes, there's lots of great collaborations for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I think this is my opinion. If you're in a collaboration, try and make sure that you share out, you know, other collaborators' videos, you know, help support them, show them some love. If you're somebody who's watching the channels, if you can share out some of the ones that you like, that would be amazing. Yeah, very cool. Yep, so we have our little door that we put together, and it's drying, and while well, I'm going to paint, finish painting the parts that I didn't do. I didn't want you guys sitting here all day. But that's pretty cute, P cute decoration. I'm, I think I'm going to make another one and put some chicken wire and some fabric on the back side and put some succulents in, because I think that's fun. I might make it... I think what I might do, ooh, that would be good. So I have like a picture frame 
from the dollar store that's kind of like I think it's made out of like plastic or something or another. I could take the glass out of that and put some chicken wire on the back and some mesh. Make that a planter. Then uh, we don't have to waste wood. Right? Yeah. Right? That would be cute. I mean, this could also be something that you could hang up. And um, if you put chicken wire on here, you could get those little miniature um, wooden clips. And you could clip like cards on there or stickers. Oh, good idea. Thanks, Jan. <laughs> it's the shizness. Oh, she did it. I did. Where am I going to hang it? I don't know. <laughs> I, I made this one and I haven't hung it yet. I have no idea. I might hang this one in my upstairs hallway. This one I might be saving for a gift. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right? So, uh, <laughs> oh, funny. Got to razz you a little bit, Jan. <laughs> I hope you guys are all having an amazing day. Um, if you haven't checked each other's channels out, please do. If you're watching the replay, thank you for watching the replay. Thank you for supporting me and being here. And I'll think of something creative to do um, for next Thursday, and I hope you all can make it. And this weekend, I do hope on trying to um, do a live, a random pop-up live of the cows so we can get an update on how big and round the mamas are getting. Um, also, this weekend, I might be going and getting a, um, a, a bee swarm or a beehive. So there's this 100 acre, 100 year old, 100 acre hay farm that we used to get our hay from. And the couple were just amazing. They gave me a lot of um, wooden uh, bee boxes to start my honeybees. And uh, the lady that owns the property, she was out doing some work and has workers cleaning it up because unfortunately she's selling. Um, anyways, they found. And old, hi, Jamie. How are you? Thank you for coming in. I'm getting ready to end, um, but that's okay. Anyway, so this lady's workers found an old wooden beehive that just got lots of honeybees in it. So this weekend, um, I might be going out to that farm, and I'll try to see if I can do a little bit of filming of that whole process of maybe a little bit of the hay farm, which is really amazing because the couple that grew the hay, they went out in the field and they would hand pull any weeds out of there. So for the last hundred years, that property had never been sprayed with any chemicals. So it's kind of, it's really sad that she's selling, but I understand she's, you know, She's got some other properties and stuff like that, and it's too bad, you know, but it's a beautiful property, so if I if I get a chance to go over there this weekend, I'll try to see if I can get um, a little bit of that, and if I get to bring the bees home, I'll show you that and how that all goes, and running the roads, pick up four, oh, some more birds, awesome. Very awesome. So yeah, so I might do a few random pop-up lives. That that video out at the 100 um, acre farm, it'll probably not be a live because I don't want to um, intrude on their privacy. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it'll probably just be, you know, a little here and there that I'll put together. But when the B part, I'll probably do that one live once I get them home. So if that, if I get to bring them home. So I hope you all have an amazing Thursday, have an amazing Friday and weekend. And I hope that you're staying busy and working on all the things. Um, 
learning all the skills that you can learn, sharing what you know, all your skills, because we've all got amazing skills. And that's all I got for you. And I hope that you kind of got maybe a little inspiration on creating a little fun. I mean, for your chicken coop, if you have a chicken coop, you can make this green door for your chicken coop. I did. Oh, my gosh. You should see my screen door and my chicken coop. <laughs> hey, I did it, though, right? That's all that matters, right? All right. I'm going to leave you all. Um, have a wonderful day. And I'll see you next week or somewhere in the YouTube streets. So have a great day. And I'll see you next time.